Welcome back to Dial H for Heroclix. This is episode 258. I'm your host, Chris Britton. So, let's go. Dial H for Heroclix is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all of your latest Heroclix singles and sealed products. So check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. And don't forget, you can still use code DIAL5 in uh, checkout to get 5% off of your order. Joining me in the studio again this week is my sexy ranch hand co-host, Calder Ness. What's going on, Calder? Howdy, howdy. Let's get ready. Indeed, we will. But we also need to introduce a, uh, a guest that we wanted to bring on, and we've got some uh, fun times ahead of us tonight, including the return of Bad Samaritan. But we need to introduce you to none other than Mark Castile. Welcome to the podcast, man. Howdy. All Thanks right. for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for coming on and uh, shooting the crap with us for probably about the next hour and a half. Um, we would like to get to know you a little bit more and the listener can get to know you we have a bunch of questions so calder you want to start us off yeah absolutely uh we'll start with one to get a uh, feel of when you came into the game so how and when did you get into hero clicks uh great question so i came in uh around incredible hulk right before like incredible hulk uh maybe a month or so before uh and it's kind of funny the way that i got in is my friend josh uh, was buying these, uh, was like buying some posters for clicks and then, uh, sorry, not clicks, but for, uh, Marvel. And then he saw a booster for clicks and he's like, Hey, you know, I've, I've heard of this game before. Maybe we should get into it. Uh, so I ended up buying my first booster, uh, and just giving it a shot cause I like to play board games and he, so does he. Uh, so that, that was pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, nice, nice. Okay, so you got in a little bit before Hulk comes out. The most important question I want to ask is, how do you feel about the Hulk chases? <laughs> okay, uh, you know, there are some okay ones. Uh, I actually went to um, Gen Con that year, too, for fun, Uh and I was really hoping that they were going to use the uh, Galactic Guardian set. But anyways, uh, yeah, I wasn't a huge fan of the Hulk chases, but if I had to get one, uh, I would have probably been fine with getting uh, Ice Hulk. Oh, wrong answer. <laughs> wrong answer. Get off. Yeah, I'm sorry. You got to get off the podcast right the, now. The, the answer is Wolverage, right? That's the right answer. That's my number two is Wolverage because <laughs> he's good. They're he's so, so cool. bad. They're all so bad. It was just a joke <laughs> question, really. They're easy. terrible. So we'll get on yeah. to a, a real question here. What are some of your favorite actual pieces in the game or combos of pieces that you like to use as a player? Uh, so any, uh, any king. Uh, I just have such a fond memory of playing almost any of the modern Kings, especially King Doom, because that piece was ridiculous for the time. 300 points, amazing. Uh, but I've also really enjoyed using the Chaos Wars King. Uh, but, yeah, I, I, I would just say those. Um, so and as far as... Shout out when we just did on Kang. I love it. <laughs> you could use more. Do you feel like they've captured the essence of Kang yet, or do you know, they still got a ways to go? Uh, I feel like they still they still have a little work to do. Okay. Definitely have a little work to do. Um, this is like another uh, like a C, like a two C version of that question. But like, which is your favorite non Kang Kang? So like, do you like a specific Iron Lad or like Sphinx or that other whatever guy? You know, all these other ones, Mortis. Have like, they ever made an Emotep? Isn't that his name? I don't know if they have. I'm not really sure. You know, it, probably Immortus. Um, cool. I know that he's not super great for 160 points, but he's still pretty. He's still pretty strong in the right hands because he can uh, he can stack on that prob damage. Oh right. All right, fantastic. And hitting us up with a maybe a question. I'll get a feel for your play style here. Typically, are you a more meta? Or casual player? 
Uh, I would definitely fit on the meta side, but I also really like to play silly teams once, like, really silly What's teams. What's silly? What's silly? <laughs> so, uh, I uh, I played this all uh, Captain America team. Uh, yeah! <laughs> just because it wasn't very good, but it was oh. hilarious. It was just like, I'm going to get you. This Captain America will do it, or this one, but one of them will get you. Um, How many shields or... can you take directly to the face before you go down is the real question. Uh, I I guess it just depends on who you are. Uh, <laughs> the man behind the shield is how, that. That's a good answer. How many How many Captain America shields to Calder's face could he take before that he went down? Three, no, three for sure. You think you could survive three? I Captain think I could America? tank three. Shields I, I got I got hit in the face by a cow, man. I can I can take a shield. I... <laughs> uh... Ratio, I'd say. I'm... Metal, vibranium, magic shield, or you know, hoof. So, mm. okay. I like my odds. I like my odds. If it's not Captain America throwing it, if it's like some weak dude, like I don't know, that you? one side. Oh ah! <laughs> <laughs> can you ricochet a shield off a wall and hit yourself in the face and knock yourself out? That's what I want to know, Calder. I would say me. Do I have the skill to do it? I don't understand trajectory enough. I'm terrible at pool, so I don't know if I could do it. Not with the plastic shield I have. Uh, I'm sure I could throw it at my face hard enough. All right. I don't all think right. All right. That's, back, back it's not about. It's not about me. It's not about me. <laughs> uh, Mark, what is your favorite format to play in the game of Hero Clicks? Uh, you know, uh, I like Super Theme Team. I know it's not like super popular and not really out there it's where you have to have one non-generic and one generic uh keyword match for your team any any amount of points it just it's a little bit more um difficult to build with and it's fun to see what people come up with okay uh can you give an example of a team that you've used that fits that parameter uh yeah so uh gotham city martial artist mm. Right on. I think um, martial artist probably an easier generic keyword to fit to the the name keywords. Is that right? Because I feel like if I were to make an Avengers theme team, martial artist would be an easy one to make there as well. Yeah, probably. Uh, I, I don't see why not. Or you know, uh, minions of doom and cosmic or something like that. All right. All right. Um, like let's that. see. So, uh... All right, so just to end us here, what is your usual venue? Where do you play at every week? Uh, I either play at Gone Guy in Portland. Well, that's actually technically in Beaverton. Uh, or I'll play in Things from Another World in Beaverton as well. So it nice. just depends uh, on the week and what I've got going on. Okay, so outside of Portland, Oregon, just for everyone that's not – in the United States, I guess, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Portland, Oregon, yes. Uh, <clears throat> the reason why I asked that is because we, we skipped over the uh, what made us happy this week. We need to oh, we did. Yeah, okay. we, I don't, I don't know why we forgot that. We're we so bad at this podcast. I just cut it. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to bounce back to that. And it'll make more sense uh, why I asked that here in a second. But um, Calder, do you have any additional questions you'd like to ask Mark? You know, this is going to touch on the website a little bit. What made you want to make letsclicks.com? Sure. Um, so as far as that goes, uh, it's pretty much the same answer that I've been telling everyone. Uh, I feel like the clicks community is really fractured between a bunch of small communities all together. And I know some people will disagree with that, but... Um, I mean, if you look at some of the drama that happens in the scene, it's always like West Coast, East Coast, or this venue, that venue, um, or, you know, this, that, or the other. Um, it, it, in fact, like, we'll see it on Facebook a lot. You know, some people will be like, oh, I didn't use uh, HD Realms because this, uh, or, you know, I have my own Facebook group, or Reddit. You know, it, we're, we're all scattered around, Um and yeah, some we we do have a little bit connection, but not as good as I would like it to be, because yeah. uh, uh, you know let's let's be honest here, like we don't as a player community have a great voice uh, for first off like getting better quality control from Wiz Kids, like you know it 
we we think it's more of a joke. Like, uh, you know, I'm sure you you pull a piece and like, oh, of course, Wiz Kids, ha ha ha, right? When it's broken, uh, but I. I think part of the reason why that's acceptable at this point is one, you know, it's more of a joke, and two, we yeah. don't actually have a really good body to of people to um, like a good body of community to really uh, have a larger impacting voice. To make right? change, to really see the change we want to see in this game, I can yeah. I can see why you feel that way. I can see yeah, it. exactly. Uh, plus, you know, I, I feel like having a more um, welcoming opening uh community and that's what i'm kind of focusing on i'm sure if you've been on there uh you'll see that we've made uh documentations for team uh uh, team abilities um how to play the game and this is we want to uh we also really want to hit on the uh portion of like new players we want new players because new players is what's going to make a bigger impact than the same players winning over and over and over or playing over and over and over. Right. I'm sure yeah. you've had like new players come in and you're like, Oh, this is awesome. And then they stick around and it's great. Um, and that's the other thing is right. Like if we have a better core, then if somebody new wants to get in, then you can recommend them to, you know, one specific website uh, or area that can better cater to them or better give them information because i can't tell you one website right now other than our webs uh, other than let's clicks that has a uh a place for you to go and get a very uh helpful walkthrough of how to even start the game right because we we have the we have the uh, uh beginner guide that's just one through eight that you can go right. through and it it's Anybody that's starting off new should be able to get a really good idea of how to play the game. Uh, and I, I don't know about you, but I can't think of another place that you can do that. I, I know that there's YouTube videos, but it's not still a great uh, way to get somebody introduced. And there's a lot of YouTube videos, and some are like old, and it's some are outdated. Like that's just a fact. You get, you can type in how to play Hero Clicks, whatever, on YouTube, and you'll get some really old stuff. Now, we're great at the time, sure, but, like, now it's just that's a different game. It's a different game. Right. So, yeah, thank you. That, that pretty much encompassed pretty much everything I was looking well, for. So, so. so letsclicks.com is basically going to be a HUD, right, where people can go to for any kind of information about the game or also, my understanding is entertainment for the game if you're not just going there to uh, learn about the game, right? Um, I'm On Let's Clicks, uh, there is um, – a tab for podcasts, for example, where you can... It's a, it's a good-looking tab. It's a good-looking yeah, tab. Uh, yeah, it's a really good-looking tab. Um, <laughs> uh, thank you, obviously, for putting us on there, but we're not the only ones on there, and I suspect we will not uh, be... We'll definitely not be the last people to be added to that tab, but um, what are your plans as far as going forward with um, maybe, like, the entertainment side of it or, like, community involvement, so like writing blogs or vlogs or anything like that? Yeah, you know, um, I, I'm, we're very open to people adding content. Like, if you, uh, you know, if you guys want it to be added to the video tab or whatever, no problem. We can figure that out. Right now I've just added the uh, WizKids uh, feed from there. Um, and it, we're, the main thing that we're uh, more concerned about is like your intentions, right? We don't want people trying to monetize uh, anything on there, right? We, we get that you have uh, fees and stuff, but the main idea is like we just don't want to associate Let's Clicks with people specifically like selling or, uh, you know, a service um, for the game. But other than that, we're we're really open. Uh, like I said, if somebody had an article they wanted to post, totally we can throw it up on blogs. Uh, I've let any blogger that's uh, reached out to me or I've reached out to either on um, Facebook or uh, Reddit know, hey, if you want to start writing or just do, doing copy and paste to that, that's great. You're more than welcome to. Uh, you know, it's when it's a negative impact that's – when it'll be an issue but so far it's only been pretty positive so we're open to any suggestions as well if you feel like uh you know there's something missing there just ask and then we can kind of look at options and adapt to it 
uh, and see if, you know, it's logistically possible um, or, you know, technically possible um, as, as in like the computer side of things. Um, I mean, we've talked about uh, doing, um, and I know everybody is trying to do it, um, is unboxing videos, just because those are super easy, but super fun to do. Um, I'm also thinking of trying to host events just to, for like newer people. Um, I'm, and, and this may not be like a, uh, a for sure event uh, thing, but I've been playing around with the idea of buying like a breaker case, um, opening it all. I know that's a little weird. Uh, and then building these teams out of the pieces we pull. Uh, and putting them into, you know, paper bags or whatever, so they're all random. Removing the rarer pieces, for like Super Rare, uh, Chase, and Primes, and, use, uh, and putting those in prize bags. So if you win, first, second, third, you get to pick one, and that, that's your prize, right? Uh, the idea with that is to get new players to come in again. Uh, you show up, you pay the $10, you instantly get a team that you can play um, that's already well constructed uh, for less than a price of a booster, and you get you know a little bit more than a booster worth of pieces, or uh, depending on what the team might be. But uh, yeah, just to kind of give you a, a, an idea of some of the things that we we're talking about no, on our pretty, side. Uh, that's pretty legit format. I can I can appreciate that. So to yeah. me, I would lose that though. Because I can't play any team that I didn't build. Because I'm probably the worst pilot, <laughs> worst pilot in the game. Like it's like here's go, here's this team, and I'm like you gotta explain it to me because I have no idea what I'm doing with these guys, man. So yeah. I wanted to ask uh, more of like a macro level question, kind of. Um, earlier you mentioned about how there is a schism in the community that belongs to the game, and you said specifically you have like East Coast guys and West Coast guys and girls and stuff, but like. What exactly do you think is driving that schism, and why do you think that this website's going to be able to like mend that? Uh, so that's a great question. You know, uh, I think the reason for that is, uh, and I don't want to bring up any specific names or anything, uh, is really um, disconnect in the community, right? Like um, from the West Coast, we we're not as a big a community and we're not as uh, tight knit as, you know, some of the further East folk. Um, and I think because of that is generally West coast isn't seen as, uh, you know, as a healthy or, or as a uh, um, competitive, because let's be honest, a lot of uh, competitiveness brings players in, right? People like being competitive, yeah, sure. people like winning. Um, and I think that's part of it. Um, I think the other part is um, just getting to know people or finding, you know, specific formats that uh, will help people get into it, right? Um, most of the venues that I play around with are pretty uh, – a little bit more higher level um, play, and it doesn't, doesn't necessarily cater to that. And I, I, I feel like – uh, from my experience, because I've lived in Idaho, I've lived in uh, Salt Lake City, which is uh, Utah, uh, and I've, I've visited around a few places. Um, and generally, the the level is either really high or really uh, not as high. Mm. Um, and I feel like closing that gap is the main thing. And the reason I think there's uh, you know the separation is distance and open communication, right? Um, I've, I've seen this happen a few times where uh, one group will be like, oh, well, this is a joke to us, and then somebody will take it offensively, and I feel like kind of smoothing that communication over will be uh, much more efficient. And again, not that I think what's clicks is the answer to that, but I think having a area that's much more open, welcoming, and kind is the solution to that, you know. Um, and as long as we set the tone there for that to be the um, the purpose, then it'll kind of smooth itself out, per se, you know. Because uh, I'll see on Facebook 
uh, pretty frequently that there's like trollish posts and stuff there or, you know, aggravating uh, stuff to other people. Uh, and I'm not saying this happens all the time, but I, I've definitely seen it here in the last, you know, few weeks, uh, and I'm sure it'll continue to happen. Um, and I feel like setting a precedence for appropriate communication is um, important, right? Like on Facebook, sure. people, uh, HD Realms is a great, great example, actually, because uh, a lot of salt happens on there, right? Oh, oh yeah. Um, that's, that's pretty lightly. That's, that's <laughs> right? pretty really lightly. Yeah. Um, it, it, and if we, it, if you had a better tone set off of like, hey, this this is a place where we're here to talk and talk about ideas, right? We're we're just here to talk. We're not here to fight or be upset. Um, we're here to progress. I think that's a lot more efficient than just being like, well, I'm upset about this community or I'm upset about this or, you know, I don't like that they made uh, Captain America again, which who should be. He's great. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, anyways, that, that's my thoughts. Uh, I, I know it's not a perfect solution. And I know that, you know, it might be a really long work in progress, but that's the hope. Um, and uh, I feel like, you know, as they do say, if you build it, people will come. And I feel like slowly but surely that will happen um but well, who knows? I'm, we'll find I'm out really i'm really anxious to see where it goes from here um people like myself and calder we really appreciate people like you that are willing to go out there and actually do something because there's a lot of people that are willing to jump on the internet and complain and that's all they'll do that's all they'll do they'll just get on just so they can complain but they never actually come up with solutions to any of the problems you guys are sitting down you're trying to come up with a solution, so we we can definitely appreciate the effort for sure. Yeah, and uh, not to cut you off or anything, but um, you know, with Cerebro, we're trying to introduce a better database uh, for people to go to. That's in beta, and expect that to be a work in progress. Um, but you know, uh, not only that is we're looking at possibly migrating uh, to a different. Uh, service uh, like back end uh, to even further increase flexibility for what we can do. So we, yeah, we just want to, we want to provide an actual solution for people for just whatever they need game wise. So. Okay. Right. Calder, do you have any last minute things before we move on? No, man. I think that about covers it. All right, let's jump back. We forgot entirely like we normally do. Start us off with what made us happy this week. Uh, I actually have a couple things. The first thing is I want to say thank you for all of the people out there that made it possible for us to get to 650 Twitter followers. Once again, for a HeroClix yes. podcast Twitter, uh, that's kind of a like a big deal. The <laughs> I don't I didn't really expect. It's not like we're gonna have 147,000 followers out there, but like we do appreciate everybody that did jump on there. That's really cool, and I'm hoping that we can get to Facebook 800. Sooner rather. Yeah, 814 away. We're up one. 14 away. I, 14 we away. really appreciate it. That's, that's really cool. It's good, Second yeah. thing that made me happy this week, just to recap uh, last week's episode, I put it in order to cool stuff. I was an idiot. I forgot to use our own code in the checkout. I emailed them to be like, and uh, by the way, I titled the email, I'm an idiot. So I, I suspect maybe it made someone laugh at cool stuff. Like, hey, can I retroactively apply this? To my order, they totally said yes and reapplied it and like refunded me money. So I, that was really cool of Whizki or of uh not of Whizkids of uh cool stuff. And it was, I remember when we first got the uh, the sponsorship for cool stuff. I was like, I wouldn't plug anything that I don't believe in as like a company. And it's stuff like this of good customer satisfaction and stuff like their communication was on point. And it's stuff like that why I continue to believe in companies like that. Uh, so that was really cool. And the last thing was, I did not know this until this week, but we have listeners in Brazil. Like, <laughs> that means, Calder, we're on five continents now. Yeah, right, buddy. We did it. <laughs> we're, we're on five continents. So that's really cool. Uh, really made me happy. And then I, we just, I think we need to just get people in Africa listening to us. I don't think anybody in Africa listens to us, but we'll make it happen. And we'll go from there. That's what made me happy this week. Calder, what made you happy? Uh, mine's going to be a weird one. Um, 
I just found myself with very few podcasts to listen to. I like went through all the downloads, whatever. I even listened to us and I'm like, I'm really screwed uh, the barrel here. Um, so I decided to download cause you know, a friend recommended it to me, the Joe Rogan show, Joe Rogan himself, I guess, I don't know, whatever. But the Alex Jones episode probably provided me with the most entertainment I've ever had in my entire – it's like four hours and 40 minutes long. I didn't, I didn't listen to it straight, but like whatever, Bluetooth would connect to my car and it would just automatically start. Alex Jones is my favorite comedian. I mean that's just – that's a fact. Like he, he may not say he himself is a comedian, but like when he's like, you don't know, they're cutting up. You know, lizards and babies and we're like whatever. And like he's talking about the sky people, lizards and shit. Like, dude, I I can listen to that man for hours. I'm not even gonna lie. Like I'm now I'm sad they took him off the internet, like in other places besides his own website, because that was that was the funniest podcast I ever had in my entire life. And he he would get so I don't wanna say angry. He would just get pent up about like the things that made no sense. This one guy whatever, flat earther. And he's just like, I'll take you. No, no, I got a million dollars. Money's just something to do fun with. I'm going to take you to go see the Ice Edge or whatever Flat Earthers believe in. And I'm like, let's do it. Let's go. Let's go on a boat. Let's go to the Ice Edge, man. Because he's just, he's like, yeah, let's go. He's like, no, no, I don't want to go. I'm too scared. I'm like, oh, yeah, right. You're going to go see the Ice Edge. Let's go. And I'm like, yes. And this is, just, it's just, I, I've, I laughed more in that, in, during that podcast and I think I, I have my entire life that was it was some of the funniest he like like how with you he asked someone to choke him out it's like choke, choke me out I used to do it all the time and I'm like yeah we, it shows Alex I mean it's <laughs> it was so much fun if you guys have time if you care um about like just wasting time it's not even a waste of time it was you honestly uh, like I'm gonna I'm gonna go back and listen to the first episode he was on of this podcast he it, it was hilarious so if you just want to like a good gut busting like laugh right there go pause this podcast no finish this podcast uh and then go listen to a Joe Rogan episode things like 1255 Alex Jones returns it's it's uh it's hilarious it, oh, it, it brought me the most joy this week so yeah are you telling me that extended periods of lack of oxygen to the brain will do things to I, your brain. Might affect, maybe, just maybe. Weird how that works. Huh. All right. Well, I'm glad you got a good chuckle out of that. Uh, Mark, is there something that made you happy this week? Oh, that's that's a great question. Uh, ooh, I when I was in Ireland, I got to feed swans. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, like they ate it on my hand. I know that's really weird to say. Like, I'm in Ireland. There's gonna be a lot of cool things, but I. I like animals a lot, and I really liked that they ate out of my hand. It was just oh, yeah. really cool. I, I don't know, kind of silly, but I well, was no, that, that so could be about like it. a legit experience, especially if you've never had anything like that. Sometimes life is all about finding the simplest pleasures, you know. So sure. if that's if that's what made you happy, that's what made you happy, man. There's nothing wrong with that. So, all right, gentlemen, we did it. We did it. We made it through. That's uh, the show. We're over. We, yeah, we. we uh, guys, I don't. How many? How long have we been doing this and we completely forgot about what made us happy at the beginning? Of the I know. I, so I, I, So bad at this. Anyway, um, this week we got the Scott Porter unboxing video. We got a bunch of spoilers. We cannot go into all of them, but let's jump into the news section. We're going to talk about it a little bit. <laughs> All right, like I said, there's so many to go through. We've actually each chosen just one to go through, uh, and uh, they're pretty fun. I, I suspect I know what Calder's might be. I'm not going to get into that. But a little I'll, bit. I'll do mine first because it's probably the least interesting out of the three chosen, and that is 002, Captain Marvel. Uh, the reason why I chose this is because this week we got that preview, and I just happened to read the issue of Infinity Wars where she gets this power gym. I'm sorry, the reality gym. And it's really interesting to me about how she's like traversing different realities and speaking to herself, like the other dimensional versions of herself to ask them advice on how to deal with situations and things like that. So I just thought that was really cool. So I was I was like, oh, this is cool that they made uh, one specifically about this uh, part in the storyline coming in at 45 points which is by far the lowest point costed carol danvers we have ever gotten i'm pretty sure um she can be 50 points if you add the five point bearer of the reality gym trait to her captain marvel starts the game with the uh, reality gym equipped uh, she has four clicks long she has the avengers kree cosmic and soldiers keyword she has the uh, avengers team ability 
she does not have Indom, which kind of expect you know expected because she's only 45 points. Uh, flight though, she does start off with hypersonic speed and nine speed, ten attack with precision strike, 17 defense with impervious and three printed damage. So I don't think we know what the reality gym does right now. Man, we don't. It's crazy. So, uh, yeah, it, I think we have like four out of the six gyms right now. But genuinely, for 45 points, if you just run this four-click long dial, I totally think she's worth it. Uh, she has six range, one bolt, and why that'll matter is because on click two and three of her dial, she has range combat expert, base two damage on both of those. She still maintains the 10 attack. And even on the second click, she still has pin si or, uh, precision strike. She switches from that one top dial click of hypersonic speed to sidestep the rest of the dial. But just for 45 points, I totally think that this figure is worth it, uh, especially because she can do damage to any character on the map with that three base damage in your precision strike. That's pretty cool. I'm just anxious to see how the reality gym makes her better. I think that'll be cool, and I just wanted to talk about that Captain Marvel. So, uh Calder, do you have anything you wanted to mention about Captain Marvel or Mark? Nah, I hate her. <laughs> what? No, I'm just, I'm just Great. messing. You know, I'm just messing. No, she's fine. She's pretty good. I can't wait to see what she, uh, she combos well with and sealed. I mean, hypersonic, hypersonic. She's gonna be annoying. Right. I mean, her keywords are great too. Like this just further makes cosmic teams better, uh, and soldiers and Avengers. So I, I think she's great. Yeah, pretty good. Okay, well, um. I know where Mark's is. Calder, you're, I think your figure is between Mark and I numerically. So why don't numerically. you talk about, Let's yeah, do about it. yours? What's Let's yours? Let's do it. Um, Chase Red Skulls. No, I'm just messing around. I want to talk about that. I want to talk about it so bad. But WizKids actually made another figure that's somehow even better than that. So my, I'm, I'm going to nerd out here. But 041B Falcon. This is Sam Wilson. He has Avengers Defenders. Something heroes prior shield and soldier keywords. Very few Falcons get soldier because uh, he, he wasn't a soldier in in comics. So that's really cool. They gave it to him. He can pair well with Captain America, which is uh, a little little foreshadowing here for you. So he's got one trait. My friend Red Wing at the beginning of the game generate Red Wing bystander. Red Wing has autonomous. I find it funny that they printed that like as his trait because they forgot to put it like on Red Wing or something. I don't know what it is, but it's great. Uh, then he has second trait, Captain America and the Falcon energy shield deflection period. A friendly character named Captain America is on the map. Falcon has autonomous. Oh buddy. So 75 points, Avengers team ability flight with Indom and autonomous. If you're playing with Captain America. So I will only ever play this guy with Captain America. Unless I get terrible sealed pulls. He's always going to be with Captain America because this is what he can do without taking up any actions. It's amazing. So let's look about a top dial flight, 12 speed charge, 10 attack, quake, 18 defense with super senses, three damage with a special damage power, which is close combat expert as close. So he can move up six squares and he can be a 12, three or an 11, four, or, you know, a 10, five. It's dope. And he has ignored his characters for movement the entire time, which is amazing. So, Captain America, he works really well with the Falcon, but what does Red Wing do? Let's go check out this vampiric bird, shall we? He's a 9 speed with hypersonic, 9 attack with precision strike, 16 defense with super senses, 1 damage, tiny symbol, flight symbol, and autonomous, as long as Falcon is on the board. Okay, that's kind of interesting, actually. Falcon dies. We lose that trait there, buddy, and uh, doesn't have autonomous anymore, so it's kind of neat. So what does, what does he do? What does Red Wing do? Well, he's got a little... Uh, that little Wolverine dude. He does the same thing. So once per game, when Red Wing would be KO'd, instead, it isn't protected pulse wave. <laughs> Lowercase. So his entire dial isn't protected pulse wave, so you can still pulse wave him and ignore the super senses, but he's going to come back to life at least once, which is dope. His second trait, which is so dumb, and I love it so much, always by our side. At the beginning of your turn, roll a d6, four through six. Remove an action token from a friendly, from a friendly adjacent character named Falcon or Captain America. So he's tiny size, so they can carry him around. He has great, it's like better leadership because it succeeds on a four through six. It only works on these two, but that's all it has to work on. It's, ah, it's so dope. So this Falcon, I mean, when I first saw this, I was like, yes, someone choked me out. Let's do it. Falcon. Um, <laughs> but seriously, this Falcon's amazing. Uh, after he loses charge, he gets sidestep as close combat expert and combat reflexes, which is great. He only drops to a nine to his last click. Um, but for 75 points, he takes 
Uh, that close combat expert from the old ABS Falcon, which is awesome. Avengers Assemble is a great set. Well, it's a terrible set, but add that Falcon, which is awesome. So he brings that in. He teams all with really with any Captain America, which is great. So if you want to run him with the female version of himself, it would actually be a really great pair. So with Sam Cap, this Falcon is even better. So that's really cool. Uh, I love this Falcon a lot. I always wanted a Captain America and Falcon duo because to me, in my head, uh, when I started reading comics, it was, it was Captain America and Falcon. That was the team. Captain Bucky, they're great. They're cool. But Captain America and Falcon were always my favorite. And I think a duo of them would work really cool, very interesting. But even though they're partners, they spend a lot of time. You know, Falcon flies, Cap doesn't. So this is, like, just the perfect Falcon to team up with, like, any Steve Rogers, any Captain America. And I love it a lot. WizKids, they didn't have to make this for me, but they did, and I appreciate that. This really was, like, a love letter to you, Calder. So good. Such a good Falcon. Oh, I love it. The Falcon that I always went to was definitely that Avengers Assembled set Falcon for like it's like the same amount of points, right? Like seventy five. They're points. both seventy five. Yeah, and this one is way better, hands, hands down, better in like every way. So oh, yeah. I'm definitely going to be replacing the use of that one with this one. And fortunately, uh, we got this one as the rare prime rare instead prime. of the super rare prime. Yeah, rare primes. I don't know why rare primes are hard to pull, man. That super rare prime is Baron Mordo, and yeah. I'm so excited that they they did not flop those and make the rare prime Baron Mordo because I would much much rather have Falcon than oh, Baron Mordo. Sure. Oh heck yeah! So, Mark, you have anything you want to say? Uh, yeah, you know, so I think the reason why they made the trait uh, for Red Wing has autonomous is kind of a poke at uh, at Dawnbreaker. Because, I mean, if you're going to, let, let's be honest, you're going to eventually be pair, paired up against Dawnbreaker in, if you're playing this ga- guy in meta. So it restricts uh, Red Wing from being just further uh, terrifying on the opposing character's team, right? Yeah, uh, sure. But I think he's great, yeah. Uh, no matter what, he's going to be hard to hit until he gets close uh, which is great. I mean, starting off with 20 defense is just always welcomed. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Well, we have one more character that we wanted to talk about. Uh, Mark, why don't you just go ahead and take it away? Awesome. So uh, my character, as you might have guessed, is going to be 056 King the Conqueror title character. Uh, he starts off with Running Shot, Psychic Blast, ESD, Energy Shield Deflection, uh, and Probability Control. Uh, He has 6 movement, 11 attack, 18 defense, 3 damage. Uh, No improved anything, which is fine, because he has sweet, I mean, really sweet, and I think they nailed King on this one, to be honest, uh, title abilities. Uh, which his plus one, which, uh, by the way, he starts with zero plot points, but his plus one is going to be free, generate a time portal marker in a square within range and a line of fire. Fantastic. Like it. Let's see what it does, though. Uh, minus one, time and time again, free, place King the Conqueror in an unoccupied square within range, and that has a time portal marker and heal him one click. So he automatically heals himself. Who doesn't like healing themselves uh i don't know anyone uh, and then <laughs> <laughs> this is an astute observation yes we I love it uh and then his uh his ultimate as i like to call them and i'm sure other people do too uh which is minus x uh king wars x is any number of no uh X is any number up to the number of unoccupied time portal markers on the map. Free. Uh, place King the Conqueror in any unoccupied square with a time portal. Give, uh, then give him a close or range action, which both of those are in uh, caps. So if you had, you know, range combat expert somehow, you could, you know, have him use that. Or close combat expert, you could, well, that one's actually a power, but flurry then he could use close, right? Uh, after resolutions, remove the marker. King the Cocker may be given this free action again up to X times. It's, I, it's, I love it. Yeah. 
insane. Uh, he's probably going to be very uh, heavily used by me because I like playing Kang, and this is uh, – he's just ridiculous. He's awesome. Also, his keywords are fantastic. Uh, Avengers, Council of Kang, Young Avengers, Future Past, Ruler, and, of course, Scientist. Uh, so he's oh. – I mean, what don't you want from him? Well, out, out, every single one of the title characters has a disadvantage when they get KO'd. So let's talk about that real quick. This one particularly says um, when Kane the Conqueror is KO'd, at the end of each opposing player's turn, that player rolls a D6. Four through six, that player may remove an action token from one of their characters. Mark, how's this going to play out? How do you think? Uh, well, that's if you let him get KO'd, right? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. you want to keep your... <laughs> but, I mean, like, when Harley Quinn came out, and you're like, oh, man, all I have to do is kill Harley Quinn, a smart player, you aim for title characters, because you know if you KO that particular title character, you're going to get some kind of bonus. Sure. So, so, if I'm playing against you, and you love King the Conqueror, uh, I'm going to get... I got a gun for your King the Conqueror. What am I going to uh-huh. get out of this? How am I going to benefit, really? Uh, your, your primary attacker is probably going to go almost every uh every turn right because you have two action tokens that you can do if it's an end turn you have a 50 percent chance to remove it so if you think about it mathematically you know uh you should be going three times in a row if not more than that uh so it's a huge benefit but you know that's if you ko king that's a, that's and, you know, I'm going to chime in here just because, like, when you KO, let's say just because I'm always focused on Cap, Captain America, boom, instant, you get a prop every single turn. Kang's ability, you might not even get anything. Your dice could just be terrible. And it's like, so, honestly, there's a 50% chance that there's no downside to letting Kang die. Like, and even then, they remove one action token off of, okay, wow, world's not going to end there, you know? Like, when you kill Wasp, deal one pen, like unavoidable damage to each friendly character within whatever. Like, that can just murder an entire team. That can suck. Kang's right here, if he dies, even then, it's you remove one action token off one character, and it's a 50% chance. I'd roll those odds every day of the week. Connor, I think that there's going to come a point where we need to make, like, a top ten list of just title characters of worst to best when they die effects. And I'm pretty sure, spoiler alert, Harley Quinn's going to be the worst one there is. (laughs) Here's the thing. Captain America's die effect gives your opponent map-wide prob on your turn. It it hurts. It sucks. That is is pretty bad. There's a lot of of bad ones. I'm saying is Kang's is pretty, like, not bad at all. It's, like, it's pretty good. What about... Uh, Captain America principled. His is pretty uh, brutal too because he oh, gives man. you uh, uh, battle fury. Battle fury gives your entire yeah. team battle fury. That one can can murder you, or maybe it's not bad. It depends. Like if you're running cap, like with characters that you would work well with, with your range in cap pieces, it's gonna your team's done. You're you're done. I'm sorry, but you're done if you're running it like that. So yeah, that's pretty brutal too. I will agree. Maybe this can just be like a main topic or something for an. Well, let's do it. Well, let's, uh, we'll figure episode. it out later. Yeah. Figure it out later. Right. Um, and, so that's uh, like most of the news, guys. Uh, that oh, was... one, one second before we move uh, on, just about yeah. Kang. I just wanted to correct myself. Uh, earlier, we were talking about the names of Kang. You, you asked about the different versions of Kang, right? And yeah. I, I said his name was like Imhotep. It's, it's Rama Tut, in case that comes up, in case someone so, wanted to correct me. So I'm correcting myself. Words. Just get it out of the way. All right. Somebody already wrote it. Um, so some highlights from the unboxing that we're not going to touch on, but just kind of go out. Lockjaw is pretty dumb. He's pretty cool. Etri, it, Etri, the, the guy Peter Dinklage played, he's really cool. They made AI Iron Man. His dial's really neat. Uh, looks like the Colobsidian figures, uh, whatever, Black Order are getting a bunch of dials. There's lots of good stuff. Check them out. Dialish Fury Flicks on Facebook. Uh, we have all the ones, uh, that Scott had up there. If you want to take a more in-depth look, there's lots of good stuff. So we couldn't have the time to cover it, but there's a lot of good stuff. I think um, next week we'll probably go a lot more deeper into the set as a whole just because we'll know a lot more of what's going on. Um, The one thing that I'm genuinely concerned about is I think we have one chase that is not spoiled right now. Yeah, yeah, man. One chase that I need it to be, and I'm pretty sure it is not going to be the 1 million BC Avengers Phoenix. It's probably going to be that Iron Man with the gauntlet, and I'm – legitimately going to be perturbed when it is iron man and not the phoenix like 
please, please don't do that to me, Whiz Kids. Please. <laughs> they already did it. There's no coming back from this. Oh man. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, last minute thoughts, and we're gonna move on. Mark, how about you? Uh, yeah. Yay, hero clicks. <laughs> 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 All right, well, you know what? It's been a long time coming. We have not played Bad Samaritan in a while, so let's go ahead and do that. All right. This may be your first episode of Dial H that you have ever tur- tuned into. You do not know how how uh, Bad Samaritan is played. Here is how it is played. In front of me, I have chosen three modern age figures. In front of Calder, he has a random number generator, and he's going to generate numbers. Those numbers are associated to clues that I have in front of me, and each round, he's going to give me a number. I'm going to give you two the associated clue, and you will get one guess per round. You have three rounds per character to guess what that modern age figure is. So if you get a right answer, it will sound like this. If you get a wrong answer, it will sound like this. Whoever gets uh, the answers correct the most gets a point, and at the end of three figures, whoever has the most amount of points wins Bad Samaritan this week. So, I think I think we're ready to go. Do you? Uh, does anybody have any questions? Uh, no, I have one comment though. Yeah. I I didn't I I really would prefer to hear that right question. That that one sounds much better. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, it's I think I think that's a soundbite from Mega Man. Mega, Mega Man, Man X, baby. Yes. He dies. Yeah. Yeah. You you don't want that. You don't want that. I mean, I want you to have that because I want Chris all of those just Sigma. points. I'm trying to sweep two one more time before I leave. One more. All Not right. Gonna so happen make, there. make it happen, gentlemen. Calder, why don't you give me the first clue for this? Uh, um, starting right us off super high is number three. All right, number three is the set. The set for this particular yeah. figure is the Captain Marvel Gravity Feed. Oh, jeez, look at this guy. I'm going to go – there's a lot of good stuff in that set. I'm just going to throw one out, Jan Rog. Jan Rog? Jan okay. Rog. That is, a, that is a figure that is in the set. So far, you are doing well. I'm probably. just killing it, killing it. Locked in. <laughs> Locked in. Jan Rog. Mark, do you have a guess? Uh, I'm going to say Minerva. Ooh, there we go. <laughs> no! <laughs> what? Who <laughs> was it? Which one? All right, it was Mark. Uh, Marky got yes! a point for Minerva. Um, now, here, here's what I want to know. Why did they name it Minerva? Dude, no. Instead of just Minerva. No. Like, yeah. That's an actual character from the comics. Why didn't they just keep her name her name? I don't understand. Like, Whatever. Anyway, you already prevented my sweep, so uh, that's that's pretty disheartening. Oh, man. I like the sound, though, so I'm into that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we will move on to figure number two. Calder, give me a clue. All right, we got clue number 11. Number 11 is name of traits. The name of the trait that I'm choosing to give you is Quaking in Terror. Quaking in Terror. That's so weird. Okay. Um, Off the top of my head, I can't think of any character that has that trait. Uh, quaking in Terror. Are they Quaking in Terror? Are mm. people Quaking mm. in Terror? I don't know. Great. I don't know. Great. You do know. I'm not gonna tell you. Uh, yeah, I'm lying. I totally know who it is. Yeah, of course. Uh, Quicken and Terrorist is great. Um, man, Mark, do you have any thoughts on this one? Uh, he is a comic book character. Oh man. So, so, okay, I didn't I didn't realize that was the level of input I was getting. Uh, man, Quicken and Terror. I'm just gonna go with someone with Quake. I'm just gonna say Hulk. Okay. Locked in with the Hulk on Hulk's Calder's out. end. Mark, do you have a guess? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna guess terror. Terror? Yeah. That's All the- right. Locked in with terror. Survey says. <laughs> I don't I don't like that one. Da-da. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Clue number two for figure number two. Call her. Give me a number. Uh, let me give it to you. X gonna uh, number nine. Number nine is range and number of volts. Zero and one. Zero and one. Zero one. Oh, this guy. That's so helpful, man. Um. 
See, now this is where the bad Sam struggle is coming in. Because now you're like zero range, one bolt, quaking in terror. What? <laughs> what a terrible trait. <laughs> what a terrible trait name. Um, I, don't, I just don't want there to be a, a whole bunch of dead air. But like right now, my brain is just pff, everywhere. Everywhere and nowhere at the same time. It's gaining no traction. It's like quaking in terror, buddy. I want to, for some reason, fat is in my mind. I, I, like I my, have an idea. Okay, what's up? Uh, it's so he has he has new sets. Uh, well, the last one's new set, and I know everybody likes to talk about new sets. So, uh, what's newer than Captain Marvel? Uh, Gravity Feed. Good old Rebirth, man. Yeah. So, uh, who from Rebirth might make you terrified? See now, look at this. Now this is. That's what I'm talking about. That is some good work right there. Uh, chases, right? Those chases, man. Terrifying. The yeah, so I, I know for a fact one. none of them have it. Oh, uh, none of them I, have I, it? Never yeah, mind. Yeah, I've looked at enough their, I looked at enough of their dials uh, okay, to know for a fact none of them have that trait. I uh, know Dr. Poison, or whatever her name is. She doesn't have it because we lord Colonel Poison. Poison. Colonel right. Poison. She earned She earned that, that rank. military rank. Sorry. Sorry. Jeez. Uh, man. Uh, zero, zero. It's yeah, zero range. range. Uh, zero one range, bolt because it all started. It, it would have to be a monster then, uh, yeah. because a terror monster, right? Like, sure. uh, uh, who's who's a monster from that set? I uh, don't ask me. I didn't buy any of it. Oh, okay. Um, I know, just useless, <laughs> useless. I mean, I bought two boosters for pre-release, um, and I don't think any of the Haywoods or the Chinese folks had it. So, you know what's funny about what's this? Up? You guys are either like spot on the money, like or f- close, floundering, or you're not even close at all. Yeah, like <laughs> it could be any figure <laughs> that is modern. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna g- I'm gonna go with <laughs> new set, not rebirth. The set I know a little more about. I'm gonna go with um, dang it, now I can't think of his stupid name. <sighs> Could be a human guy with the hooves. That guy. Gorgon? Gorgon, thank you. Yeah, I'm going to go with Gorgon. He does a really cool quake thing, so go with okay. Gorgon. All right, lock Oh, wait, he's got Gorgon. range. Mark, do you have an answer? Uh, Do I have an answer? That is... I know it's not going to be a female character, so uh, Terra, who would make sense to have quake, right? Not her, because she's she's a sweet old gal. Not is too she sweet, though? Not. Is she though? <laughs> not is too she? sweet. Not too sweet. No. Uh, uh, questionably sweet. How about that? I'd say questionably okay. for Tara's okay. character. Okay. Uh, uh, not Citizen Steel. No, uh, no. I uh, see now. Power now I'm girl. To go back to Rebirth. Power Girl. There you power go. girl that you're gonna lock it in as power girl she can be mean yeah okay she's not you're right thank you not mean uh uh black adam oh that's actually okay. a good one that's okay. a really good one we're gonna go with black adam yeah yeah okay locked in with black adam survey says <laughs> ah, survey done. that's a big old negative Dude. let's go on to clue number three we got number six number six is named keyword oh maybe here we go. I'll know it after this. Guaranteed. <laughs> Guaranteed. You don't need to ask. Right. I know for a fact after this. God watch. Ad- I don't need to. <laughs> <laughs> How did you know that based off of the one keyword? Because uh, Rebirth, there's only there's only like seven monsters in there. And because Monster's such a heavy theme team, you've, if you look enough at the monsters... Uh, which I have, by the way, for team building, you eventually get familiar with who's modern. <laughs> all right. All right. Locked in with uh, Demos. Demos or Demos. Uh, what See, do you want to say, Calder? Dude, Godwatch, is that, I assume it's a DC keyword, I guess, right? Is it? Yeah, DC exists. Yeah, it's a DC's thing. DC's it. I'm not asking you. I'm asking Mark. <laughs> yes. God, okay, it's great. DC. Great. I know nothing about DC. That's going to be fun. Um... What other Godwatch characters are there, Mark? Uh, there's the counterpart to that gentleman. Uh, who does he partner up with? Uh, I don't recall. There's only like four of them. There's, okay. There's only four, 
Uh, I do know that there's one, the Dee Dee Lady, uh, which she does uh, some pretty cool things for Dee Dee friends. Uh, there's Phobos. Uh, I'm going with Phobos. Oh, Phobos. that's a good one. Okay. Yep. Locked in for Phobos. Phobos. There it is. Yep. All right, we've got Deimos and Phobos. Uh, just for funsies. The Ose so Colonel Poison does have God Watch, just saying. Oh, does she? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Uh, All right. Survey says. Yes. It. It is. It's Deimos. Oh my gosh. All right. That that is two points. Mark. That's two gonna... points for Mark, who is definitely not cheating by using HC Realms, right, Mark? Nope. Why would I use HC Realms? <laughs> Just checking. We'll move on. Oh, to, uh, I have my own three. database. Oh, there it is. <laughs> This is a good point. All right, touche, like sir. Let's click, so are we, Mark? <laughs> two, two what, you, you just said specifically one, so. Uh, uh, that's true. All right, well, we'll move on to uh, click number three. Uh, Calder, give me a clue. We got 20, my man. 20, all right. So 17 through 20 on the list is a free uh, slot. So you guys can choose any one particular thing you want to know about the figure commonly chosen or let's see uh, range and number of bolts. Set. You guys want to know set. that? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Any special combat bolts. symbols? Set. Set. <laughs> set. <laughs> Please. Set. What? Why? You don't want to know improved movement set. or nah. generic keyword? Good. No. All right. The set is Earth X. Earth X. That's what I'm talking about. There we go. Okay. What is it, Calder? What is it? Uh, yeah. It is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think of an EarthX character. Wait, we have a we have a common. We have we have sorry an uncommon. Uh, we have a rare. So this, if I'm just I'm just making this up, by the way. Okay. Uh, it's probably a good chance that this is going to be a super rare, right? Uh, you would like to think you know how Chris's brain works. If you got to figure it out, let me know because I don't. I'm not even close. <laughs> Well, I, I just, I'm just throwing this out here. So now, if you're uh, a normal person, that could be, that could be true, and it might be. I don't know. Oh no, no, no! Sorry. Uh, yeah. So, uh, super rare. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking super rare myself. Okay. Earth X, super rare. No one's heard of or cared about in Earth X. That's because that, that's kind of what Chris does. That hurt my feelings a lot. Extra <laughs> that, one. That cuts deep. That cuts real deep. Mark. No one, no one cares about our X fifty one. All right. That hurt uh, my feeling. Wow. Uh, locked in with X fifty one as harsh. Mark's answer. Calder, just, what do you got? What do you have? Harsh. <laughs> so harsh. Uh, I'm gonna say Medusa. Medu. That's a character I care about. Ah, uh, yeah, but so I don't. <laughs> locked in with Medusa. Survey says. <laughs> Negative. Point All right. Average. Clue two. I need a point. I don't want Calder to get any points Number this week. Number six. Number six. Wait, didn't we have that a second ago? I mean, yeah. yeah. Was, name yeah. keyword. Na- name Godwatch. keyword. Name keyword. Next. Dang it. All right. Spider-Man family. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Spider-Man family. How, huh, buddy? I'm going to go with uh, Alistair Smythe. Smith. Whatever. All right. Locked in. Alistair Smythe. Yep. Uh, Spider-Woman. She's super rare. She is. All right. Locked in, uh, Spider Woman. Those are quick guesses, guys. Those are, yeah, heck yeah, buddy. Too bad they're wrong. Ah! Ah! Clue number three. Oh, I cannot stand this guy. Number eight. Number eight is improved movement or targeting. Punch. There is actually improved movement. Okay. Because he's a Spider Man character. <laughs> ignores elevated terrain, ignores hindering terrain. Spider Man. Is that what your guess is? Spider Man? Spider Man. Okay. Locked in for Spider-Man. Wait, 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 wait. Do we do we have to say like which Spider-Man it is? No, you say Spider-Man. It's any character named Spider hyphen Man, Spider Dash Man. This Spider- is correct. These are the rules. These are the okay. rules. Okay. Uh, if if uh, Calder breaks the rules, we're gonna have to choke him out. Yeah. Yeah. Drive over here, choke me out. Uh, you all the time. Oh man, I don't know how I feel. See, about all that. the Spider. Here's the thing though that all the Spider people had improved, ignore hindering, and uh, elevated. That's uh, off, Venom. Okay. Ooh, there we go. Locked in Mickey. with Venom. That is a, that's a female Venom. Yeah. No. Did you just say Venom? Yeah, you, you just 
there's like four there's venoms. venoms in there. You, yeah, a bunch of venoms. You just, you just said I had to pick one. Yeah, man. I'm just, just messing you with you. You need to be specific, so I just want to be broad. I, I need to know. I need to know. I'm just curious. No, I'm just curious. Uh, Survey says. No, oh, oh! I got a point. I got a point. All right. Uh, it is none other than zero one eight Ezekiel Sims. That's this. I no I was shoe having Ezekiel Sims old Sims man. Smith, son of a gun. That's Jack Daniels. I meant Ezekiel. I swear to the Lord. I I was trying the ball, dude. <laughs> Not the ball, dude, but the the crew cut hanging on mm. the ball. I, mm. I don't know why I said Alistair Smith. That's to do with the weird tentacle arms. I'm sorry, plebeian. I can't oh! listen to you anymore with all of my points over here. How many points do you have this week, Calder? Oh, that's right, zero. You have zero points. <laughs> Nothing? No, no response? I have the stuff I say. I just want a response out of you. That's like no, half my humor. I want to give you a response. You're not worth talking to, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to all right, gentlemen. You. Well, the, uh, the winner of this week is clearly yeah. Mark. It's crazy. Uh, you won. You beat Calder and myself. So uh, thank you very much for playing Bad Samaritan and at least giving me the satisfaction of kn- satisfaction of knowing that Calder is the loser. If nothing else, <laughs> I can walk away. Can I, no. can I just say that Minerva is amazing, by the way, for her points? I, I never really really? looked at the Captain Marvel set outside Coulson, so I was so not ready for that. Yeah. Anyways, th- right. that's why I guessed her is because she's just what fantastic. Gal. What a gal. How do you feel about Colonel Poison? <laughs> I actually think Colonel Poison has a uh, very interesting potential. Uh, yeah, she does. She's awesome. Battle Three, like, oh, so overlooked, uh, and you can completely cripple uh, a piece with giving it out. So, <sighs> I love that stuff. That's good. That's a good piece. That's good uncommon right there, ladies and gentlemen. That is a future value corner piece right there. And no, it's not. Both. not. It's a hidden it corner, corner. gym. She's never going to be on the value corner. She might. She, yeah, she, she's really great. No, I love her a lot, too. I want <laughs> to do something to spite me. Chris right now, but I really can't because she's a great figure. Uh, all right. Did we decide, uh, did we decide Mark, are you going to stick around? Uh, I got to go make dinner. Uh, oh, man. So, all right. Yeah, you know, I'm hungry. If, if you want, you can come on over. <laughs> I, got, all, I got food. All the way to... All the way to Oregon? Yeah. Yeah, why not? We'll work on that. Be there 15 hours, <laughs> man. Let's do it. Let's go. <laughs> well, thanks so much for having me. And, uh, of course. Thank you I so have... much for being on. Yeah, my pleasure, honestly. Take care. Uh, Take yeah. care. Bye. Bye, man. Oh, and lastly, uh, go check out letsclicks.com, and you can be part of the community over there with us and then also the other wonderful people that are on letsclicks.com. Thanks, Mark. Uh-huh. Bye. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we just need to let you know that Dial H works off the value for value model, and our goal is to entertain you guys and gals. So if you feel like jumping on and getting your heroic rank, uh, you can do that on our Patreon or via PayPal. Uh, we, we do appreciate that. Uh, if you need the rules on how to get your like heroic rank and where that sits and stuff like that, just go to the Patreon. You can, you can read the rules if absolutely nothing else. Um, we did actually get... A, uh, a new citizen as of today through the PayPal, but because of our heroic ranking up ceremonies always occurring the second episode of every month, um, that'll be next month. So I think No respect, least, I tell you, this Chris yeah, guy. Well, I mean, we, he's, he's getting the title. He's getting the title now. All right. He's just not getting the, the ceremony All right. until All right, next I see how it month. Is. And then and that is uh, – that is, uh, is going to be Citizen Chris Kurtz. Oh, so it's sweet, been a long time. Sweet, yeah, fantastic. We, we, you guys have heard his name like a million times, and now he officially has his heroic title. Um, before we move on to the community section, I did want to say this. Uh, we did get the first batch of dice all mailed out oh, yeah? nice. this, this nice. week. And no joke, we are down already to, I think, like 10 sets left. Oh, nice. I can dig it. Yeah. Nice, man. That, that's it. So... Um, this is actually, believe it or not, not a marketing ploy. Um, supplies are limited, so if you do actually want one, um, <laughs> make sure you get them fast because, uh, like I said, we we only have ten left. So those nice. went a lot faster than what I thought that they were going to go, which was genuinely excited for and happy about it and stuff like that. So um, Chris just actually just bought one outright from us. Oh, cool. Uh, so that was pretty cool. Um, and he just and we just did that through PayPal. So if you guys are interested in that, just uh, 
Well, we can do that. But let's go ahead and jump into the community section. There are dozens of us. Dozens! All righty. Um, you know, this week, let's go ahead and start off with... Uh, we got two things from listeners, and then we'll go into the actual Community Tuesdays question. Um, one is from Alec. I got, man, you're going to have to write in and let us know how to pronounce your name. Megacon 2019. He was the guy that last week said uh, about the Force Cubes idea and creating pre-made teams and stuff like that. He, he uh, messaged in because apparently... We, we didn't understand. We got it wrong. We'll take the blame on this one. But he said, um, thanks for your answer, but I think I misrepresented my question. No, it's probably us. We'll just take the blame. Uh, here's what I was thinking. Creating a pool of figures with which to crack packs, in quotes. What? What does that seal, mean? What is that? What is crack um, packs? For sealed uh, games, like what occurs in Magic or other card games. I'm thinking what's the magic? figures, but interested in your thoughts. Okay, so what's a Magic? Um Here's my new interpretation of this. All right. Uh, if you were if you were to go to like a shop and there were like blind pre-made bags in front of you and they're like uh, they're guaranteed to be like a 300 point team uh, to sit down and play with, and you all just grab a random bag and you open it and you have your like 300 point team. Uh, w- what would you want in those uh, like those bags? Okay. Okay. I uh, I sort of did that with EarthX. I th- See, I thought I got it right. And so I don't know how magic works. I don't know how card games in general work. Is this just like pre-built deck? Like, boom, I'm ready to rock and roll. I got my Yu-Gi-Oh! graveyard deck ready to send you to the Shadow Realm or wherever the heck. I'm, I hope. I don't know, man. I <laughs> Like, so many other people can probably understand this better than me because I don't understand it at all. But, like, honestly, if you said choose 50 characters that are just going to be like, boom, you got them ready. This is what you can pull from. Make a team. It's going to be every version of Captain America I got because they're all on a shelf. I can just have them. I'm like that's it. Like, okay, that's boring. you personally. But like, if you were to sit, say you had a shop, right? Okay. And you sat down to make these for other people. Not everybody loves Captain America. But yeah, but guess who they're like going to play, America. Chris? It's my shop, my rules. You're going to play Captain. America. <laughs> You're just going to force everybody to play Captain yeah. America. Oh. oh look, I pulled Captain America again. Right, and did Timmy. Back there with a big grin on his face. Yeah. He's like. Yeah, you you want this. You want to play this. Try and choke me out. You can't. And that's how I suspect that went. <laughs> okay, well, um, this is not my answer. This is totally going to go. The credit to this is going to go to uh, superfan Eric Capes, actually. He, he wrote us a couple emails, and in these emails, he had created – he'd taken this idea of, like, these force cubes, right? This is what um, Alec had mentioned in here. And he made a ball, like, this huge list of characters. Um, on like what you would want, and I, he broke them down into like they've obviously got the point totals and stuff, but the, the probably the most important part of this list, which I I kind of want to like reach out to Eric and be like, man, you, sh- you should post this this list somewhere, post this on like our page and stuff so people can see this. Um, but the roles, the roles of the characters themselves, like what would that person do, and then filling a role. So kind of like uh, in the same way. Uh, so, Calder, you've played Dungeons and Dragons, right? I have, yeah. Okay, so when you go to build a, a party, you go, you're like, oh, I need a melee character, oh, I need a range based character, I need a magic character, something like that. Well, this is kind of the same thing. So you're gonna be like, oh, I need a melee, something. I need a flyer. I need um, somebody that carries stuff. Uh, I need a support character, something like that. So, are there any particular pieces that you would use just because they're easy to use and you would want people to be introduced into the game or just you know that they're going to be really useful in like a force cube man so because i instantly think golden age doing something like this it's it would be characters that you would just have there right i would be like five bucks you have a bunch of golden age trash or like maybe some modern age all right stuff um so there'd be like some standout ones like you can make a really awesome x-men force cube super easy right moria mctaggart amazing x-men support with like some cables and stuff and that's like just commons you know or throw on a couple of super rare x-men like gateway throw in one super rare in a pack really make someone's day pulling a super rare you know now you've got your carry you've got a bunch of perplexes on your team you got a credible main attacker cable like i would they'd all for me a force cube would all go by keyword pretty much because i would want a character a new player i would want them to play a team that they'd be familiar with you know maybe more deep comic book characters know but they know cable they know stuff like that if you want it's hard to do cyclops wolverine nowadays but like if you want like you know Iceman, cyclops whatever a fun x-men team boom there's your x-men team and then i would just be like all right avengers team 
you know, AEW, Hawkeye, Captain America, common like that, you know, stuff like that, etc. cetera. Um, just find, figure out what each keyword has for main attackers, secondary attackers, and then support. And that's, that's pretty much the formula I would follow if I was making these. It'd be keyword first. All right. What do they have? Who would new people understand if they have any knowledge about comic books? They like, no, you know who Batman is. Okay. Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman. Boom. There you go. Like, that's probably what I would like my mindset for making a force key would be. And do you think that you would list out everything that was like available to be put into the the little graph? I would pack? for sure. I would like label them like Avengers pack, X Men pack. You know, like if I if you just hate the Batman family for whatever reason, I hate these dark brooding, you know, stealthy idiots. They're so lame and not colorful, or like whatever. This is not a personal opinion. I'm just saying a random one. Then it's like you don't want to choose a random pack. Be like, oh crap, I'm not gonna play Batman. This sucks. You know, you'd be like, all right, boom, that's a Batman team. Avengers team, X Men team, you know, Cosmic team, like whatever. I would, I would definitely label these bags for sure. It's like I want to play Avengers. Boom, there's an Avengers one, hundred percent. Okay, cool. Uh, I also think it would be really easy to kind of combine two different formats in a way. So you could do this like Force Cube idea with Popper, for example. So like every single one of the bags would only have like commons and uncommons in it. So you don't have to worry about anything past that it would just be like a fun little like oh i paid five bucks and you got at least got a full-blown theme team out of it or something oh, right. like that like honestly sinister syndicate would be a sick pack to get you can do a bunch of sinister syndicate stuff like that's another great keyword that has a lot of support you know just green goblins not super rare but the old you know one norman osborne overdrive stuff like that amazing teams you can make for fun with sinister syndicate lizard sandman etc like there's, there's all sorts of easy packs you can make. We're using Popper, not using Popper. Uh, that can still be like only a $5 pack that people can get a lot of fun out of. And I would honestly, if Fenu's had this, I would totally give it a shot. Right on. Okay. Hopefully that answered it a little bit better. Uh, this and if we still got not... it wrong, I can believe that. I get a lot <laughs> of stuff wrong. We are professionals. No, we're not. Um, okay, moving on to the next thing that we got is actually from Alexander Tavora. That's our man in Brazil, actually, one of the one of the guys that listens to us. He sent in a question that said, what's your favorite support character? And he listed his, which I'm really more interested in talking about why he chose what he chose than I am talking about what I chose. But we'll start with you. What's your favorite support character? I got to check this vision out really quick. <laughs> like, I want to... <laughs> Okay, so oh, okay. Uh, Mr. Well, yeah, okay. Mr. Tavora's support character that he chose as his favorite support character is Vision from the original – I think that's the Avenger set, the original one. This is the Ultimates Universe Vision, and dude, it's garbage. It's so bad. Yeah, it's, why it's, why it's did you choose this as your support He's perplexed. Support he wants to target himself. Like, why? I don't want to make fun of like this choice, but this Vision um, – Hey man, if you love him, you love him. That's all I'm gonna say. Could it possible? Could it could it be a possibility that this is just a troll? And like, a troll. <laughs> I could be a troll. He's like, uh, yeah. So uh, this is my favorite one, and he just picked one from like a really long time ago. That was he like cool. reached into a bag and just pulled out. I'm like, a vision's my support figure. Um, <laughs> uh, like my He's not support. even really a support character though. He's That's not. The thing. Okay. Like, I don't want to. I don't want to. You know, poop on this. Just because this might be genuinely his favorite support figure. I don't know. I don't know. People, people, man. Um, favorite support figures. Support can be a lot of different things. My favorite ones are really simple. I like Weasel. Uh, I own three Weasels just to always have Weasels, man. I love Weasel a lot. He just is plus one stats. You know, that's why I also love Wizkid. Wizkid is great. He's on a lot of teams. Sure, he takes. Do you remember? Do you remember when Weasel was like meta or kind of pseudo meta? Hell yeah, he's, and then, heck yeah, he's meta. And then, and then uh, after that, like the next set or whatever, a couple sets after that was the Flash, and the Flash had the authority in it, and all of the authority figures did something that were was intentionally like trying to curtail the meta at the time, and I can't remember which figure it was, but it was it said something along the lines of if. Uh, your opponent's characters are in their starting zone past turn three or something. They start taking, like, one penetrating damage every turn. Oh, yeah. And I was like, this this is so so dumb. Like, this is only going to ever actually occur as soon as 
you use it. It didn't, it didn't even get used as a silver bullet in the meta no. to stop like the weasel and blind owl crap that was. And going on. like, but like blind owl, she hurts. So she's also one of my favorites, right? Because she instantly can pop off hell spawn. So many characters, just boom. Only thirteen points. Power action, get him off that stupid click. She has world perplex if you're a Deadpool, which is awesome. So that's really great. Um, the reason I like this weasel, though, is that he has Hydra and Scientist, and you can use those on so many different ways. With the Hydra cap, you can use him with Avengers and just totally make a Thor or, you know, Hammer of Thor Captain America. Wicked Beefy, they get plus one attack, enhancement, and plus one range. That's dope. Plus pseudo prob. Um, so he's amazing. Also, I use him a lot with Red Skull for let's build a death machine or like whatever it was called. And I would just have two weasels by him and it's like one weasel would do the power action. Boom, put a death token or whatever or research token on his cart. And that Red Skull would be plus two stats flying around in no time. Like I love these weasels a lot. And Whiskit's great because he does the same thing for two points less, except it's actually better because it's with close attacks too. So he's awesome. Those are my kind of favorite supports. I just like stat modifiers. Um, I could have no problem on a team, but if I know my stats can be just like 15 attack, 14 attack, something dumb, then I'm okay with no prob. Honestly, I'm all about stat modifiers. That's it. Chris. So I, um, normally when I put probs on my team, it's going to go to like my tertiary attacker or my main attacker will already have it. So I don't use probs as my support piece. So Let's attack that support... tertiary, my man. Yeah. What I typically do for support is I actually choose characters with support. <laughs> which seems too much on the Terrible. nose realistically Terrible. but um, I, I really really like night nurse uh from the civil war set and then my all my my favorite actually that beats night nurse out by just a little bit is jane foster because she can morph into an attacker if you need her to be and also because you can't really target her which is hilarious to me so I'm like, yeah, go Jane Foster. That's my favorite one. Dude, I, support is probably the least used power I have, honestly. I don't know why I just don't use support almost ever. Well, you have to have, like, support and defend at the same time. Yeah, know? to be useful. Like, I agree. Y- you need them to have, like, 13 defense with defend and, like, an 11 attack or something. Jeez. Like, Moria Jeez. McTaggart from the Days of Future Pass set was, like, on point. She was awesome. Like, I agree with that. When she's like, her attack becomes 11 or whatever it said. I can't remember. It's been so long since I've seen it. But I was like, man, this is this is good stuff. You only need to roll, like, a like a 4 or 5 or something. I was like, that's that's pretty good. So I like those. Uh, let's, let's move on to Community Tuesday's question, which this week was super easy softball for a lot of people. What is your all-time – favorite hero clicks sculpts calder was yours oh uh, we talked about sculpts a lot last week but my all-time favorite and it's really hard to deem through this but it's it's that captain iron america it's just so amazing it's such a great sculpt i love it a lot like you in my mind they haven't made a cap sculpt to beat it yet and i don't know if they ever will so it's captain iron america all day okay uh mine is going to be either the serpent from fear itself because it's just amazing or I actually love the title Thor, and uh, nice. I, I really I really like that because that's my favorite Thor costume from the comic books. So when they made that, and I, I know that there's been like one other one or something like that, but this one was just awesome because of the stance that he was in, and then also with with the lightning. I'm like, man, heck yeah, man, awesome, it's so good. So uh, I'm gonna start us off on Twitter this week. It is uh, the Ruffian Super Fan, uh, Little Plastic Superheroes. He said, hands down, ADW Ghost Rider for me. Can we just all agree that Ghost Rider sculpts, on average, are just... Amazing? They're all pretty great, yeah. yeah. Uh, flaming motorcycles just happen to be amazing, but this one's got the chain action going on. Pretty amazing. Um, I finally saw one of those in real life, like, last week, and I was like, wow, I need to own this piece. It's, it's freaking awesome. Jacob Weaver on the Facebook, he went ahead and he posted a picture of the Dark Phoenix Colossal Jean Grey, and it's a pretty great-looking sculpt. That is a fantastic sculpt as well. Protagonist Benjamin Umansky said, I love Robin from Rebirth as well as Barbados. Uh, P.S. Commenting on both because I love both equally. All right, man. All right. Jeff Bozeman said, nothing is better than Deadpool on top of a unicorn with rainbows. And, like, that's a great sculpt. I've still never seen one in real life, never played against one, but that is an amazing Deadpool unicorn. It's a great sculpt. Wait, okay. Hold on. I have to, I have to go back. Uh, this guy. protagonist protagonist mr umansky said commenting on both because i love you both equally did he respond on on facebook as well 
I bet he did. Maybe he did. Lots by, of, not, lots not, not by both of the not by, not both of the figures, both of us. He oh yeah, us. man, I love it. All right. Uh, Cody Williams said, "KC Green Lantern from World's Finest. It is awesome. It is a sweet sculpt." Some guy, some cool guy named Hunter Smith uh, said, "At one point, I owned every Colossal ever made, and while I didn't end up caring for his playstyle all that much, this guy was by far the most detailed sculpt and paint they ever did." And it he links to the. I almost said the Phoenix, uh, the Serpent uh, from Fear Itself, which is, once again, an amazing sculpt. It really is. Uh, we have, let's see, protagonist Ben Jones, our man in Australia, said, It's a toss-up between the Mighty Thor chase for the Incredible Hulk set and Magneto from GSX. Oh, it is cool. Love, love the effects on both of them. So, yeah. Um, also, I don't know if we've ever gotten those green bases other than on those chases in the Incredible Hulk I think it's the only set. time, yeah. And I, I bet you for a lot of those people, like a lot of people, they either love them or hate them. I happen to love them. I think they're a really, really interesting color. And I think it'd be cool to bring them back. I don't know, man. Green, green ain't my color. Uh, Corey Holmes said it's a tough choice, but I know this one is up there. And it's that Colossus Wolverine from GSX where he's going to do the Cannonball special. That is a great sculpt. I really love it. <laughs> you are such a lukewarm fan. It's a fastball special Cannonball. Did I, did, what did I say? Ah. Uh, Okay. Cannonball special. Fastball okay. special. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't read a lot of X-Men. I'm so sorry. Uh, so sorry. Protagonist Porcupine Great. Spaceship Grenade on Twitter. Um, definitely this Thor sculpt. And um, I'm going to have to look this up in a minute just so I can let you guys know what it is. I think it's the it's one of the movie ones, but I can't remember which one it is. It is the only figure I keep at my desk. Also one of my favorite uses of lightning on a sculpt. Um, I'm going to look that up. Why don't you... Go ahead and go. Figure, I'll figure it out. All right, Matthew Edge, he just goes ahead and he posts a picture of the KC Green Lantern from Worlds. I, I don't know why people like this sculpt. He's just some dude. He looks like Michael Keaton in green knight armor sitting on a translucent toilet. Like, it's dumb. I, I don't get why anyone <laughs> likes this sculpt, but okay, Green Lantern sitting in a freaking chair. Awesome sculpt. Not trying dude, to be little. I love that sculpt. Whatever, man. I think it's so awesome. I don't know why you hate it so much. Okay, so I did find it. It is the – I think it's a chase. Yeah, it's a chase from Thor the Dark World, number 19. It is, like, legitimately awesome. And uh, since we mentioned this earlier, it is one of the Thors – not the comic book Thor, but a Thor without a helmet on. So just oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Interesting to know. Um, we have an answer from – Vigilante Collectible said, Junk Pile from the 2099 box set. During an era where so many sculpts had derpy eyes and cartoonish proportions, Junk Pile was amazing. He actually is still, like, really... Good old Junk Pile, man. Well, there's, like, a lot of detail on his legs. Oh, sure there is. Sure there is. You can see, I mean, he's, like, a mechanical man. I don't know if he's a full robot or, like, synthesoid or whatever he is, but, like, you can... You can tell. <laughs> okay, nice. Check him, out, check him out. I can dig it. Brandon Roberts said either the Dr. Fate Con exclusive, Black Adam Super from the Superman set, or the KC Green Lantern Chase. I'll just, uh, for you, I'll take out KC Green Lantern Chase because that's garbage. But uh, the Black Adam is really cool because he's <laughs> he's choking. I gotta, can't remember his name. Someone's already said it. Uh, is that the one where he's holding up that body? Yeah, no, he's holding up the guy. And I know what the guy's name is. George. It's George something. People are going to be so mad. He's one of the... People call him, like, one of the best heroes players of all time, and I can't think of his name. George. But it's George. Sue, okay. I right. think? I don't know. I can't remember. Whatever. But it's a great sculpt. It's an awesome sculpt. That is pretty cool. Jedi Legend said there are a lot of good ones now. I'd say Deadpool on the Unicorn, which is a yeah. sweet sculpt. I agree. But of those that I own, it's got to be Magneto from GSX. Um, and then also he wanted to say that uh, the Iceman sculpt, the the uh, Chase, not Chase, um, the Super Rare, the one with the, like, ice that he slipped. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then also the Joker's Wild Man Bat are clearly up there. They're great. Uh, Benjamin Norris said the Phoenix Five, and he posted a sweet picture of, like, the sun kind of coming in and hitting the Phoenix Five. And, wow, do they look beautiful. I got to say, I've never played against Phoenix Five, but they do look awesome. Wow. Man, that's got to be a really high point game if you play oh, against them. Yeah, probably. For sure. All right. The Big Stabowski said King Thor from the Avengers set. As soon as I saw that that piece, I had to have it. It was amazing. So, yes, I agree. Uh, good old Christian, superfan Christian Bogan said, Captain Venom from Earth X is my favorite. That sculpt is simply gorgeous. The plant job is impeccable. It would be worthy as just a shelf piece if he wasn't so playable. Honorable mentions to World's Finest 
uh, Zero Fifty Batman, that awesome stoic, watchful protector look, and Harley Quinn and the Gotham Girls, Zero Fifty Four King Shark. The way he looks like he's just bursting out of the water is fantastic. You know, WizKids actually does some pretty great jobs when it comes to water effects. Uh, I remember we talked about the Namor from the Nick Fury set. Oh, yeah. pretty amazing. Like that diving under the water effect is awesome. And then, I, I don't know, there's just been a lot of really good figures out there with good water effects. Citizen Chris Kurtz says, Unipool, but I like so many. The best set was for Skul- the best set for Sculpts was Fear Itself, though. Man, I love that set for Sculpts. I thought they did such an awesome job. I totally, I totally missed Fear Itself, which sucks, but... I heard, I heard it was great. Uh, David J. Gaffney said, The Captain America and Iron Man combo from Civil War, especially Cap with his suit being all torn up. That is, once again, it's one of those sculpts I said I freaking love those those figures together. They're great. I think pretty honestly that that duo of sculpts will probably go down in the game of Hero Clicks as like one of those iconic things that they did just to put two clicks together to make that really iconic uh panel from the comics yeah. is just amazing uh, they, they did a really good fan service there uh vicho said cat you're gonna like this one caller captain america from hammer of thor oh yeah or spider-man buy a box from web of spider-man which one is that is that the one with the two by two that might be the two by two one that we like kind of down talked a little <laughs> it really could be i think i think it's if it's the buy a box i feel like that's what it would be too oh shoot mm. um do you say this is protagonist Benjamin Umansky, right? Uh, yeah. Did I get that right? Robin from the Rebirth set looks amazing. Also <laughs> love Barbados from the same set. Hmm. Mm. All right. Uh, Alexander Tavora said, I am a, I'm simple, and he just linked a picture of Venom Hulk. Oh, and nice. It does look pretty sweet. I like it a lot. Wait, did, didn't he mention this particular piece for something else on, like, Another Community Tuesdays question, like last week or two weeks ago or something? I don't know. That's a good question. I feel like he did. I'm not really hey, sure. Hey, man, if you like a figure, you like a figure, man. Uh, yeah. Paul Groff said, Nick Fury, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Namor, period. Hey! Splash, period. <laughs> Love Splash. It. Splash. Splunk. Tristan Campos said, I have to go with Flex Mentallo. After yeah! He, he's a hero of hero the beach. Hero of the beach. Flexing, baby. Uh, Citizen James Peters said Ghost Rider from ADW is probably my all-time favorite. After that, probably Ghost Rider from Fantastic Forces or Daredevil from Hammer of Thor. Dude, have you ever seen the Ghost Rider from Fantastic Forces? Ah, uh, that's Catch, right? I don't think I have. I don't, I actually don't remember okay. if, it, if it's Catch. Ah, uh, it's whatever. All I know is it's freaking awesome. Heck Hold yeah, on, man. Real quick. Uh, do, 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 yeah, I think it is Catch. Yeah, it's, it's legitimately awesome, though. Uh, you can't tell from the picture on HC Realms. The only problem with this particular sculpt was uh, the – God, there's going to be somebody out there that's going to be like, oh, you don't know the names of this piece of the motorcycle? What holds the uh, the wheel onto the handlebars? Spokes? Part? I don't know what the hell they're called. I'm going to look no, so good. dumb. I don't know. Whatever. Well, they, the, the plastic in there kind of bent, especially oh, okay. if it like got touched at all. So what would end up happening with this particular sculpt is the wheel would get bent towards the frame of the motorcycle, and it would be actually touching the frame of the motorcycle sometimes right. if you didn't take care of it. So that was the only bad thing about that. And then also I can see he, that didn't have a, he, he didn't have a chain. Oh, yeah. That ain't right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the last one that I have from Here Twitter go. is Here go. yeah, uh, bat with beard. Okay. Said Doom, Doomsday holding the soups cape. Yeah, which that's is pretty cool. actually a really, really good one. I thought that was pretty um, cool as soon as I saw to it. To be on the other side of that one, we have Citizen Jeff Polier with uh, he said favorite single base, single character, uh, Superman DC ten getting it uh, in in out of the phone booth. I don't know which way he's stabbing, but uh, he's ripping his shirt off, showing the showing the symbols. So that's pretty cool. Oh, the Superman, yeah, yeah, oh, that's a good one. That's a that was a cool sculpt. I'm out on Oh, three. you're out? Oh, we're right on through. Yep. Justin Quid said Moon Knight from ADW, because that mad lad can roll out some panache or whatever he means. Um, yeah, that's pretty panache. cool. Panache. <laughs> panache, whatever, man. Matthew Armour said so many good ones, but it's got to be the Christmas Joker. Alex Ro- Roherig said Man Bat from Joker's Wild, hands down. John Eric Hafford said Dark Beast, but like that wicked old one from way long ago. I don't remember which one this is, but it's not the new one. Uh, Jet Player also went to say a few other sculpts. He actually has quite a few here so sorry man but we already said one of yours so we're probably gonna skip these just uh keep going uh matt hall said 
it's me, Spider-Man. I don't understand it, but I will. And he said, uh, Noir Spider-Man. Rick Ryan said, Venom, Captain America, Captain Venom. Aries Edge, mm, yeah. uh, Aries Edge said Aries from whatever set that is. So that's ha ha very funny, very clever. What a guy. And uh, McConnell Lamar said, ah, oh, shoot, he doesn't have the name of this one. I don't know what it is. It's like a, so that that Aries, by the way, yeah. was the first Aries that was ever made. Oh, sick. Um, back in Legacy, the DC uh, Aries, and it was dumb powerful back then. It was like one of the only pieces that had it, it had fourteen attack and five damage. <sighs> but of course and, it did. And 19 defense. So it was just it was stupid, powerful Jeez. back in the day. Uh, but yeah, McConnell Lamar, I don't know what this is, but it's like some dude stabbing another dude. And I assume it's like a horror click sculpt because there's a lot of blood on it, man. A lot of blood. Dude, I was wondering what that was because I was like, I don't think I've ever yeah, seen this that's crazy. before. I, I was hoping that you knew what it was, but apparently not. I don't, man. I don't. I'm sorry. I, I let him down. Uh, I scrolled through Facebook. I'm seeing there's like a lot of rock stuff that I totally forgot to talk about. Just look at the Facebook guys. I don't feel I don't feel like saying anything about the rock right now. The rock is great. The rock is great, but I just realized I forgot I shared a bunch of stuff that's news. But eh, whatever. Fair enough. All right. Well, thank you everybody that wrote into the community Tuesday's question. We will jump onto I think the last bit of our community, and that oh, is yeah. Jedi Legends Hero Clicks tip of the week. Help you, I can. Yes. Take you to your destination. I will. Man, we're just on a support pieces roll. Aren't we, though? He said, yeah, I've never underestimate support pieces. I've seen many scoff at Little Miss No Damage, only to be odd when she is the game changer. Pick more for less. Example would be uh, Batman the Animated Series, Lex Luthor. He's awesome. points, hard he's to awesome. hit, token removal, plus one action, stat bump, etc. You know, he's absolutely right. And what's cool is that he's not going to be one shot. You know, if you play him right, he's not a, just a, you know, like... What is it? Night Nurse. She's just, boom, easy 20 points if you don't, you know, hide her or whatever. But, like, Lex Luthor, he's taking one damage at a time, which is pretty great. So, yeah. Uh, I like it. Speaking of speaking of just support pieces in general, they can make or break your team. That is right. absolute serious, especially if you're, like, if you're going to pump a bunch of points into an Alpha Striker. It doesn't need to be a one-man army, obviously, if you have additional characters. It's not a one-man army. Uh, but you really need the right support to make your alpha striker or your very important integral part of your team piece last a little bit longer, so, hit a little bit harder, hit yeah. a little bit further away, move a little bit faster. You might need that stuff. So just like speaking from a whatever standpoint, you know, Sam Cap team, it's great. It's all the rage. But if you don't have a carry, like if you if your carry somehow, whatever, overdrive, they blow up all the objects somehow, whatever, overdrive, boom, all of a sudden he can't carry and if you can't carry sam cap the game is over i uh, like it's it's already it's terrible like if you get rid of someone's carry right away i don't know how you're doing whatever but without that 35 point overdrive or 40 point pip to troll that team is it's not popping off like it should and it's just donezo my man so yeah no carry support figures they make and break a team really hard uh, not to mention the stupid little things you can do if they are a support character that does a little niche thing with a particular other character. Can uh, always look back on those, especially if they name other characters in their traits or something like this. Like, when this character is next to a character named blank, increase their attack or defense or speed or whatever by this much or whatever they do. Just remember, down the line, there might be additional characters made, and... Those characters might shine. Those older characters might shine back through a little bit more because they're going to make your newer characters like even beefier. So yeah. as a support character, just from traits like that, super dumb. Could be awesome. Really good and useful. Nice, my man. Nice. Uh, so, okay, uh, that is Jedi Legends Hero Clicks tip of the week. Um, we do have an update on the Dial H in home base initiative. Oh, sweet. Really cool. Yeah, we got uh, two more places that have been claimed. One uh, is going to be in California. So California is finally claimed, and that is um, California. <laughs> uh, super, uh, I'm sorry, it's super fan, the ruffian, little plastic superheroes wanted to claim comics and collectibles. That is the name of the venue, and it is in Sacramento, nice. California. So if you are around Sacramento, California, and you want to go to a local venue, that that's the one. That's the one you need to be at. You can rep uh, Dial H for Dial us. H, man. And 
Then also the other one is going to be in Maryland, so on the opposite side of the country in a town called Salisbury, and that is going to be uh, Kirby Ronnie. Oh, and, cool. Uh, yeah, Phoenix Rising is the name of that venue, and um, – yeah. It's not my favorite uh, way to eat steak, but it's Salisbury's great, man. Salisbury's great. Oh, <laughs> Salisbury steaks of food. All right, come on, guys. That, that by the way, that is Citizen uh, Kirby Ronnie. Citizen by the way, Ronnie. I just wanted Heck to yeah, say. Man. Okay, that is uh, that's cool. So also, if you just want to claim um, another one of the places, uh, whether it's a country or whether it is a state. Make sure it's not already claimed, and uh, we can claim that. For Do we have a for list dilate. for people to see? Should, should I make? You know what I was thinking post? about doing? I'm just, I think it would be really cool. What's up? Grab a map. Oh, right? that and is. Cool. Just start filling in colors, and updating it, and letting it out there. I can like, see and it. we'll delete the old I posts and get the new posts. Put it for a little H like, or something like that in each state that's got one. Something like that. I don't know. Whatever. And then because I like I'm just just workshopping in my head. Yeah, right? we'll, figure we'll figure it out, we'll figure it out later. I thought it would be really cool, you know, the the more we're filling in the the globe. I love it. I thought that's oh, that really cool. Globe. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We, yeah, you're filling in the globe. Let's I guess it. we could kind of do two maps, one for the United States, States and yeah. one for the world. one for the world. The world. <laughs> that was a reference for some people. People won't get it. That's okay. Nice. <laughs> okay. Um, once again, uh, don't forget you can file follow us on Twitter. At Dial H for Hero Clicks. That is the number four on Facebook. Just search Dial H for Hero Clicks. If you want to send us an email, like we get from time to time, and I totally check those, that's Dial H for Hero Clicks at gmail.com. And I think I'm good. Okay. Uh, sorry we couldn't do a four hour, 40 minute podcast. I just can't talk about aliens and conspiracy theories for as long as Alex Jones can, guys. I'm sorry for letting us down or letting you guys down. But. As a reminder, Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com. We can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and seal products. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5 for 5% off your order. And if you're pre-ordering like Black Panther, if you're getting like a case, that's like 10, 10 something. Like 10 bucks off, so like throw another 10 bucks stuff on there if you're getting a case, etc. etc. Get your Black Panther pre ordered, get those gems, get that Ultra Chase Thanos, and make all your friends jealous. That's cool stuff, Inc. Uh, com. Bye, guys. Happy trails. My, 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 my stuff.